everybody Matt back with you hope you're okay uh, today I'm in Manchester not far off Manchester Piccadilly station currently by the canal and the reason I'm here at the moment is actually I'm off to, to pride um, but I'm tying it in with another video I've been meaning to do for quite some time now uh, a few weeks ago um, came across a video by my friend Daft Monkey and he was looking at uh, an urban legend has been kind of becoming even more prominent year after year after year. Over the last 10 years, 100 people at least have drowned in the canal across the network of canals in Manchester, so Salford Quays, um, uh, Bridgewater, etc. And here in the Rochdale Canal. Now a good number of them have been uh, resolved as to what happened. But there are 28 unsolved cases currently uh, from the canal itself. So in this video I'm going to be looking at some of those unsolved cases, trying to figure out exactly what might have happened. Um, and basically what it comes down to is a question. Is there a person running around Manchester canals at night pushing people in and drowning them? It's an urban legend that's become known as the Manchester Pusher. Each time somebody dies in the canal, the fault seems to come back to this potential serial killer that's running across Manchester at night. Throughout this video, we're going to be using CCTV footage that recorded some of the last moments of some of the victims who went missing in the canal. This hasn't been done for any kind of shock factor. In a way, I want to use it because if it happens to just be seen by somebody who can go, I saw what person, I know what happened. And they can, you know, bring some closure to the families. I think it's worth including it. So please don't think I'm being disrespectful by using that footage. The Manchester Pusher story has also hit newspaper headlines. And they've often printed the list of those names of the cases unsolved. Chris Brani went missing in June 2012. There was an extensive search, but sadly in July 2012, his body was discovered in the Manchester Ship Canal at Salford Quays. Chris was 22 years old. This video footage showed Chris the night he was walking home. This was roughly about one o'clock in the morning. In his bag, he's carrying some shoes that he'd just picked up. The footage is what some of the clearest of some of the victims that we'll show you today. But Chris eventually joins the canal at this spot. And this is the last he's seen alive. It's not particularly busy on the canal today. But I think I've just spotted someone in the same place I am. Nathan Tomlinson was 21 years old when he was found in the River Irwell near Adelphi Bridge. He went missing after a Christmas party in 2010 and his body was found in February 2011. The CCT footage of Nathan showed him walking home after the pub and taking a very convoluted route home until he reaches the bridge and seems to burst into a run. This was the last footage of Nathan. 
His parents never understood why he had taken such a strange route home, why he had burst into a run, and also why, when his body was found, his coat, wallet, phones and passport were all missing. His mother is convinced that somebody is responsible that night for the death of her son, Nathan. Also believing foul play is at work with the parents of our next victim. His name is Suvik Pal. Suvik was only 18 years old and he was a student studying in Manchester and he was found in the Bridgewater Canal. He'd been kicked out of a nightclub that night that he died in January 2013. On some CCTV footage, you can see Suvik outside the nightclub arguing with the bouncers, but at one point he's joined by a mystery man. Suvik had messaged the people he was with to say that he would be back inside the club as soon as he was able to. This man then joins him, and to this day, nobody yet knows who this man is. Yet in later CCTV footage, we see Suvik and the man at the back of the nightclub climbing a bridge. We see Suvik climb over a fence and disappear out of sight. The mystery man is later seen at the opposite end of the canal, walking in the other direction alone. So one thing I will just point out, a good number of this is quite dodgy. Um, I've already gone past one or two people just hanging around. Um, so I'm not going to stand and film much today, especially in locations like this. Uh, I've got lots of other footage to add though. One of the most disturbing details of any of the victims is for David Plunkett, who was a 21-year-old from Halifax, who was visiting at a music event in Trafford Park. Police were called in the early hours of Sunday morning. David's parents had phoned him to see if he was OK. He'd answered his phone, but only silence could be heard for about 10 minutes. Then followed a sound his parents will be haunted by forever. David started howling and screaming and then silence as the phone line went dead. Sadly, it seemed that David too had passed away in that moment. Some time later, his body was also found in the Manchester Ship Canal next to the Imperial War Museum. David's parents believe the silence on the phone suggested David may have been hiding from someone at that moment in time. Were any of these people pushed? The man on the left in the photograph is Stephen Swanton, who was 33 years old, went missing in December 2015. Stephen's body was later found in the canal. He had injuries, including a broken nose and broken teeth. Had he been attacked? Some of the unexplained deaths can certainly be put down to accidents. The canal in the middle of the night can be an unforgiving place. And although on this picture you can see a barrier and lights, a good chunk of it has neither of these things. And people can end up on the canal and get disorientated. I believe this probably happened to our next two unsolved cases. This is Orlando Nairo with 19 went missing in 2018 he was a student he went missing at 3:35 a.m. on a sunday morning 
and was found in Deansgate Locks after leaving the Viva nightclub. He was spotted on CCTV on his own, walking, jogging and then running onto the canal. As somebody who walks on the Rochdale Canal, but through Todmorden, and often at night, you can suddenly find yourself very near the edge of the canal. Orlando had had a lot to drink that night, had had our next unsolved case, the case of Charlie Pope, who was 19, student at Manchester University, also missing from March the 1st, 2018, found in the canal. He'd been trying to get home from a night out, but the bus driver refused to let him on for being too drunk. On CCTV footage, he joined the canal, towpath, at the rain bar, that then disappeared from the CCTV cameras. Naturally, again, rumours persisted of the pusher, but this time it certainly seemed it was accidental and certainly highlights some of the major factors that cause a good proportion of the fatalities on the canal. This stretch of the canal is a good example of what I'm talking about. Here there'd be no lights, there are no barriers, and the trees mean that you have to walk closer towards the edge of the canal. Imagine doing that in the night. In 2018, the story broke that a serial rapist was carrying out his crimes in Manchester. He was called Reynard Sinaga. He was picking up young gay men on the canals around Manchester Piccadilly. Speculation was that maybe he was the pusher. The Indonesian PhD student used the drug GHB or liquid ecstasy in a drink to render victims unconscious. In this way he raped over 200 men in his city centre flat between 2015 and 2017. He waited for victims outside nightclubs etc and then would offer them to stay in his flat on Princess Street. This disturbing CCTV footage shows Sinaga running around inside and then outside his flat, potentially looking for victims at two o'clock in the morning. On his arrest, after being beaten up by one of his victims waking up during an ordeal, Sinaga, at his trial, was jailed for life and will serve a whole life term. Sentence usually only passed down to murderers. He is known as the worst serial rapist in the UK and will never be released. But was Sinaga the Manchester pusher? This location is kind of terrifying as well. Um, have a look at this. This is underneath the road. Let me go and see, you just get people hanging about. <laughs> I've taken no chances today. It's too busy. Let's head back. My reaction there to this stretch of the canal perhaps shows how easy it is for a story to create fear. I almost scared myself 
just by being on the canal and thinking about the unfortunate victims that have lost their lives in the canal over the years. Not just the unsolved ones, but all of them. Manchester has always been one of my safe places. It's a place I can go and be and know I'll be okay. But on here, it does kind of feel different. The number of bodies being found in such a short time is what created the beginnings of this urban legend of the Manchester pusher. That a serial killer was prowling the canal paths at night and sending mostly young men to an icy wintry grave. I don't think there is a Manchester pusher in this case. I think most of the victims have been drinking or on drugs. They're usually intoxicated and it's usually the early hours of the morning, sometimes with bad weather conditions. The canal, as I said, has no lighting. No cameras show what happens. It's slippy and there's no safety rail. And trying to navigate a narrow path in the dark whilst not having 100% control of your faculties is very risky. So let's hope in the future there are ways to make this canal path safer. But what do you think? Do you think there is a serial killer on the loose in Manchester? Or is it just an urban legend? In the meantime, please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Also, check out the video on this subject by Daft Monkey. And in the meantime, I'll get myself to Pride. We'll see you soon.